Maybe I don't have to tell you, but today was brutal for a whole bunch of sectors involving the consumer. It's been a tough run. Now, a month ago, we ran a piece arguing that the retail-oriented real estate investment trusts are incredibly risky not the place to be. With so many retailers going under, some of that's because of the consumer, you have to worry that eventually malls and shopping centers will see their vacancies rise or their rents fall. And that will be real bad for the REITs. However, that story wasn't exactly well received by the industry. One of them, Washington Prime Group, a shopping center REIT, took some exceptions to this, and among many others in the group, frankly. We do not shy away from criticism here on Mad Money. And while I still think the group is too risky, I want you to hear both sides of the story. Hey, there's some good yielders here. And I have a lot of respect for any executive who's willing to come on the show after I said negative things about his stock, including put together a whole briefing book about how I ought to be thinking about his company so let's or her company. So let's dig deeper with Luke Conforti. He's the CEO of Washington Prime Group to get a better read on the situation as it is. Mr. Conforti, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you for coming. Good to see you, sir. Have a seat. All right, so Washington Prime, great properties, but... Just in fairness, Mark Ordam was on when we started, uh-huh. and he was a buddy of mine. He hired me at Golden. Uh, the stock was in October 1st of 2014. Dow was at 16,800, uh, 4,200, 42% gain since then. WPG was at 17, and it's down about 63%. So I want to ask, was it wrong at 17, or is it wrong now? It's more wrong now from an asymmetric standpoint. Okay, tell and me. And I think ultimately what has happened is we've been faced with a couple of binary paths. Okay. You're either, of the, we, we, you know, even topical, so your physical space or your e-commerce, and we operate under the assumption that only one is gonna win, as evidenced by us trading at well, five it's multiple. Binary. It's it binary. It's binary. And there's the primary versus secondary marketplaces, which, if you're a, not in a primary marketplace, which we did a kind of a nifty white paper kind of disproving some of the you know, some more obtuse observations. But what you're saying is, is that you're an A-quality mall and that you have high, and you, you do not have a lot of vacancies. We are a stalwart secondary marketplace, town center company that really, you know, God forbid this industry caters to your darn demographic constituencies, which we got lazy and reactive. We, kind of ubiquitous we, the entire right. industry. And here, Unless four out of ten of us here are wearing something junior fashion or accessories, I might be, but other other than that, um, we are way too long certain retail categories, junior fashion, accessories. So, my word, we have to diversify tenants. And that's, tell me how you've done that, because I see craft brew, I see some interesting things you guys are doing. Um, Understanding that it's, it's, it's a combination of local, regional, national tenancy uh, that we need to modulate and to diversify mm-hmm. and quite frankly providing real-time incentives for our leasing professionals to work on that, that diversification. And realistically, if we don't, we're actually doing a disservice not only to our guests, mm-hmm. but to our tenants, uh, who are those tenants that are evolving and kind of embracing this new world order. But, but you, you, your stock yields 15%. That's usually a red flag because most companies cannot afford to pay out that size yield, okay? Why can Washington Prime tell me, look me in the eye, and say, hey, listen, we've got coverage. We're going to be able to pay that. I can talk from a historical precedent as well as, you know, obviously we don't speak of dividend policy, but we're at about 79 80% FFO payout ratio. And if you look at, ultimately, you want to take a stream of one through N cash flows and kind of figure out how sacrosanct they are. Right. And over the last three years, it's been pretty, pretty tumultuous over the last three yes. years. I think that our, we've evidenced minimal variance. If I, was, I think it's about 175, 180 basis points. So You're my covered. charter is to provide as stalwart, as sacrosanct a stream of cash right. flows and then do cool stuff that gets a little multiple expansion. Okay, Lou, the last question is, if it's so undervalued, why not, one, take it public, or take it private, or two, get bought by another public company that wants to be able to reduce its costs? My fiduciary is to do, that's a great question, my fiduciary is to do whatever in yours to the benefit of our shareholders. So, so we're open at any time. Fair enough. Aggregator okay. or aggregate T. 
well put. All right, that's Luke and Ford. He's the CEO of Washington Prime Group. He just told you the 15% yield is good. I want you to look at it. You just heard his side. Stick with Kramer. Thank you. All right, brother. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.